We have the gauntlet for the gold. Yes. Jeff, a Royal uh, Rumble. A Royal Rumble. 90 second intervals with a clock on the screen. So. I had my uh, stopwatch. And, uh, you know, the first couple uh, entrants, they had the clock on the screen the whole time. Hmm. And so by about the fourth one, they would put the clock up at the beginning, then they'd take it down. I see. And they'd put it up when there's 10 seconds left. Hmm. And I thought, fuck, maybe there's, they're, uh, you know. Uh, it's fuck, a work clock. Fucking, fucking with the time and the, with this thing over with quicker. Like clock. But God damn it, they were sticking to their time cues. It was really boring. I was so mad that they were yeah. honest. The, fir- the battle royal portion of this was, in fact, very boring. Jeff Jarrett is number one. And the first portion of this if Je- is Jeff Jarrett playing Diesel. Alone in the ring, yeah. throwing out every guy who comes in. He throws out everybody. That, he throws out Buff Bagwell. Yes. He mm-hmm. throws out Lash LaRue. Yes. He throws out Norman Smiley. I'm, I'm, I think it's like fucking Brock Lesnar here. Jeff Jarrett. Thro- he's the heel. Yes. And he's just running through blokes in this battle royal to win this NWA title. So the fifth guy is Apollo, who... I don't think he ever did much, in the U.S. at least, outside of uh, these Irvitania shows. Big old Puerto Rican dude, kind of like a poor man's Batista. And uh, Tanae, of course, is giving his resume. He's a longtime veteran in the IWA promotion. And Don West is there to say, Mike, I don't know much about IWA. Tell me what that is. Yeah, that was really good. It was really good. And of he course, goes, Mike, what's the IWA? And, and Tanae's like, Mike well, it's immediately. one of the two biggest promotions in the Puerto Rican territory. Oh, that's great then. K Crush is six. Who goes to save Jared for some reason? Slash is seven. Wolfie D. Who went from white boy rapper to Satan worshiper? I think he's a vampire. Okay. Yeah, this was where he did a DDT, and Don West goes, God damn, that's a cool move. <laughs> it's a DDT, brother. He, I was more impressed he took a giant backdrop from Apollo. He yeah. Way up in the air. Number eight, a man I'd completely forgotten everything about. I hope you wrote it down exactly as he was introduced. Uh, Del no. Rios from New York City. No, I did not write that part. Not Alberto Del Rio. No. Del Rios. From New York City. If, if Apollo was a poor man's Batista, Del <laughs> Rios is a homeless man, Scott Steiner. He was the spellbinder. Tanae even said that he may um, look like someone you may yeah. uh, recognize. He even had the Superman logo yes. on his gear. Number nine is Justice, the future Just, uh, abyss. I could not believe my eyes. <laughs> I'd totally forgotten that he actually wrestled as Justice before he got the abyss and Joe Park gimmicks. And boy, He was, was actually Joe Park in here. He, this, this is Joe Park in a singlet. Yeah. And uh, abyss is better. Abyss is better. Yes. Conan is 10. You look good. You're great. Conan You're actually great. really, really good. Well, it's funny because he gets in the ring. And, you know, the one thing about Conan, and I think even Conan would admit this, is he did not have the best cardio. No. And so he gets in there, and he makes a great fucking, like, I'd say comeback, but he just got in there. But, you know, whenever when you get into a Royal Rumble, you start with He's your He's a comeback. house of fire, yeah. So he runs a while with his big comeback and everything like that. And he goes about a minute, and then, you know, he has someone hit him, and he just lays there. <laughs> he just laid there for a while. He got tired doing that comeback, but it was a great comeback. Let's see. Uh, Joel Gertner was number 11. Yes. No, that's not exactly true. But he does come out, and yes, I wrote down his uh, entire uh, spiel. I may have gotten some of these details wrong, but the uh, the big picture here is correct. I chase anything in a skirt and get right up in that dress. I'll be with five girls in Huntsville. I won't settle for less. We'll tear up that hotel room, make the bed sheets a mess. But first, I got some business with the Rainbow Express. But he's, Lenny and Bruce. But he's not done yet. All you girls are thinking about drinking a jug of Droid Juice. Let me introduce, and all you clowns get your asses ready for the man they call Bruce. So it is Lenny and Bruce, the Rainbow Express. Now, Lenny and Lodi in WCW were doing the West Hollywood Blondes gimmick. Which this wasn't this wasn't Kiwi. Th- this was Kiwi. This was in yes. fact Kiwi. Okay, this was okay. Kiwi. Yes. Because I recognized Kiwi playing the part of Bruce, and they said Lodi is out with injury. Bruce is his replacement. I see. Yes. Okay. So uh, they took the West Hollywood Blondes, made them the Rainbow Express. They're gay. Boo them. So 
Queebies and they're doing stuff. Rick Steiner is 12. No, 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 Vinny. Mm. Braun Breaker Sr. Pardon me. Comes ah. out and immediately tosses Wolfie D and Abyss, who takes a crazy bump to the outside. Yes. And then out comes a man. <laughs> here's here's my here's what I was gonna say about this battle royal earlier. So the reason one of the reasons this battle royal was was shitty was because when you watch the Royal Rumble, especially nowadays, you know, the Royal Rumble used to be about, hey, here comes this big star, you know, these guys are feuding, blah, blah, blah. Now the Royal Rumble is about, let's hear everyone's entrance. What song is gonna play next? And, you know, they hit, they count down, and then, oh, it's Seth's song, we can sing his fucking song or whatever. Well, Jeremy Borash is the ring announcer. Young Jeremy Borash, he's, he's got this full head of blonde, bleached blonde hair. But this poor guy's got to go like, coming in next, it's Malice! And the crowd just goes, hmm? Who the fuck is Malice? And it was like one name after another where they had to give him a new name because they couldn't use the WCW names. They couldn't use names they used in WWE. If you're watching on TV, you know, they explain who all of these guys are. But if you're in the crowd, it's like, here comes Malice! And a guy comes out. Now, who is Malice? It's the fucking wall, brother. It's the wall, brother. But he looks nothing like the wall. Now he's grown his hair out. He's got some tats. He doesn't wear a fucking shirt. And tie. And you're just watching this guy going, who in the fuck is this malice? And I could not believe when I saw the fucking wall, even in the Battle Royal. I couldn't even believe he was in the Battle Royal. And as we'll get to, I really couldn't believe the end. We'll, we'll get to the end there. You also missed the part about Rick Steiner tossing the imposter Scott Steiner out of the ring and hitting him with a, oh, I don't know, about two over the head belly to bellies before ejecting him. I thought that was a nice touch. I was just happy that Malice tossed pretty much everybody else in the ring, including Rick Steiner. M- Malice were, pissed everybody. There everybody. were only three guys left at that point. He, he, he eliminated Rick Steiner. by Steiner charged him, and Malice ducked and pulled down the ropes, and Steiner's flying bump out of the ring was horrifying. That was very, very scary. But yes. Malice also gently tossed Conan out. Yes. Well, it's more that he tossed Conan out, and Conan made sure to use everything possible to break his fall. I will roll over the top rope. I will bump on the middle rope. I will bump on the bottom rope. I will hit the apron and roll to my feet on the floor. I use the word gingerly. Yes. Yes. Delicately. Delicately. Uh, Scott Hall is 14. <laughs> we had a spot during this where Apollo goes up to the top rope like he's going to do something. <laughs> yes. And then he changes his mind and he just jumps well, down. I, I, and it's it's one thing to just like let it go, but Ed Farrar has to go, he went up to the top rope and then... He just came down. Yeah. Why the fuck did he do that? What's going on here? I mean, I'm like, do you have to call attention to it, brother? He just didn't jump. It's a it's a battle royal. I could, you could see Malice was trying to get in a position to take something, but somebody else would always grab Malice and hit him. And eventually Apollo just gave up. So Scott Hall gives Jeff Jarrett the razor's edge, at which point I believe Toby Keith was 15th. Well, it's funny because Toby Keith and uh, I think there were a couple of other guys it was like they didn't even bother to mention that they were next. So I'm not sure if Toby Keith was actually an entrant or he not. He was not. So okay. if you count him, there's 21. Okay. And he also did not was not eliminated. He went I guess that's true. He was never world. eliminated, yeah. But he comes out and he, he gives Jeff left. Jarrett a delayed suplex. And in 2002, a uh, country singer doing a wrestling move in a wrestling ring was major, major, major news. And say what you will about Toby Keith. He was a star. It was, it was a big, big deal. It's 2023. We have Logan Paul and Bad Bunny whipping ass out there. <laughs> Pat McAfee and various other guys. So a one vertical suplex will not impress the crowd anymore. But he and Razor uh, get together and throw Jeff that out of the That was a very ring. famous moment, though. Yeah. I mean, that moment, I remember that moment vividly when he did that long delayed suplex and then dropped the dude. I mean, that was good stuff. He was no Jay Leno. He was, he was better than Jay Leno. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, we are down to Scott Hall, Malice, and Apollo in the ring. With uh, Malice is the only heel, and so the babyface is just like ping pong him back and forth with chops. Scott Hall is having the time of his life, and in fact, when Malice finally goes to the corner and basically collapses, Razor just reaches his hands out and shakes Apollo's hand. Like it's been a pleasure beating people up with you. Chris Harris, the future Wildcat, Chris Harris is 16. He just attacks everybody. 
And like at the same time he comes in, the Vampire Warrior hits the yeah, ring. Yeah, Gangrel's in the ring, and they mm. didn't announce that guy either. No, I, I didn't. I, think I, he was I the presume match. he was he was an official entrant, but the announcers go, "I think Gangrel jumped the gun." I'm like, why the fuck would you jump the gun in a battle royal? That'd be stupid. Like, the point is to wait as long as you fucking can. Yeah. But he jumped the gun for some reason. It well, I think he was. I think he was in hindsight. I think he was the guy who was supposed to come out when Toby Keith did. I see. So he waited happened? waited until like the last second. Devin Storm is dangerous. Dangerous Devin Storm. I guess Devin he would Storm. be 19 then. Former crowbar. Uh, no, he'd be 17. 17. Uh, the former crowbar. So at this point, all the young guys decide to have a chop contest. There's Chris Harris and Crowbar. And Malice and Apollo, and they're all just chopping each other as hard as they can. And uh, Gangrel and Razor Ramon are in the corner standing there laughing at these idiots. I laughed really hard at that point. Steve Carino is 18. He's trying to do some spot with a double team. And he hits the ropes. As he's coming off the ropes, Scott Hall punches him. But damn it, Carino's got a spot to do, so he doesn't even slow down and goes on to finish this double team. And then the last two guys to come in are, in fact, Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man, and Brian Christopher. Hey, they saw these two guys as stars. They did. They and did. I was watching this, and I realized, you know, Ken Shamrock and Filthy Tom followed the same path. They started as professional wrestlers that no one really ever heard of. They became big stars as MMA fighters, and then they went back to pro wrestling. That's true. I never realized the parallels here. That's quite true. And many, many drugs in their youth. I think it would be... Uh, then Brian Christopher's in. <laughs> well, oh, okay. So it's funny because Brian Christopher is running wild. Like as weird as it was to watch Jeff Jarrett play Diesel, now I'm watching Brian Christopher play Undertaker, essentially, or somebody who cleared the ring really quickly. Kane. Kane, sure. And uh, he jumps out Steve Carino. I'm wondering why is, as he called himself, the G Master getting this kind of push. And suddenly he's laid out, and the match stops. And the other four guys stare at him and say, we all hate this fucker. And they just watch as Shamrock throws him out. <laughs> so our final four is Ken Shamrock, Apollo, Malice, and Scott Hall, which very quickly becomes a final two of Ken Shamrock. Yeah, before you get to that, mm -hmm. they have these four men in the ring, and the announcer goes, one of these men will be the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And I knew it was Shamrock, but I'm looking at the other guys, I'm like, okay, so it's got to be Scott Hall. Like, it's got to come down to Shamrock and Scott Hall. And all of a sudden, Scott Hall is thrown out of the fucking ring. Yes. And it is Ken Shamrock versus the fucking wall. Yes. <laughs> For the World Heavyweight Championship. Ken Shamrock versus the wall? And it wasn't good. Mm -mm. Really? No. I enjoyed Ken Shamrock it versus It was all Malice. right. I did not. All right, I'm but alone. But I mean, it's like, fuck, dude. Listen, I get, you know, you want to make a new star or whatever, or you want to do this or that, but, like, Ken Shamrock is going to win the NWA title. This is an important match. Like, get him in there with a big fucking name. So you got a big main event with two big stars, two famous guys, two big names that fight for that title. Instead, it's the wall. Nobody thought that Malice had a chance of winning. And then they did a fucking spot where there was a good spot. It started good. Malice goes for a choke slam, and Shamrock turns into a flying armbar. Awesome. Puts him in a straight armbar on the mat, and brother's selling, and he's selling, and ah! And he finally gets the ropes and breaks it, and he starts beating on the guy. Not selling his arm at all from that point forward. And then Shamrock puts him in the ankle lock. Guy gets the ropes. Shamrock pulls him back to the middle of the ring, and then I think it was the Ferrara of our people. He goes, that's illegal. And I'm like, that is illegal. What the fuck's up with this referee? And this referee is just shitty. And then Shamrock's yelling at the referee. And then, you know, it just was shitty. And then finally Shamrock hit the belly to belly and pinned him. That was a steamboat. Yes. God. There was a point. What was he doing? Where uh, Shamrock kept doing these submissions. And Malice had a long struggle to get the ropes. And Steamboat starts counting. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven. <laughs> and finally, Shamrock lets go when they argued. That was not good. I'll be honest. That was not good. This is not Ken, uh, Rick, uh, Ricky Steamboat's best show that I ever saw. So, apparently the only one. I enjoyed Malice being a giant throwing power moves and Shamrock countering the submissions all the time. 
But in the end, uh, Malice tries one more goozle, but Shamrock just turns into a belly belly and gets the pin. And I'll say this about Malice. Clearly, they had... They were impressed with what Malice could do, the former wall, because he got he he got the cane push in this. He was the one who hit the ring and eliminated everybody. Lasted to the very end as a, as an upset and, and uh, survived many submissions and to get the ropes and escape over and over and over again before finally being beaten. Like clearly, they had plans for him. I thought he looked really good out there, and in hindsight, uh, he was died alone in a Japanese hotel room eighteen months later. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. That was very depressing. Ferrara calls him the wall, has this stupid line about how fighting these two is like being in the Special Olympics. I don't I don't know. I don't God. know. Why do they and bring he, him back? And he starts the fucking joke. And then, you know, he gets to the part about the Special Olympics, and Mike Tanay just turns it and looks at him and goes, I didn't even know what he said. But like, he was, that's your response? He was, he was disgusted. Yeah. And Ferrara stops, and then he, like, kind of starts up again. Like, he can't even remember the fucking punchline. And it's like, you know, maybe don't say the punchline, you fucking moron. But he, he powered through, goddammit, and he got it out there. And I was like, I can't believe that uh, fucking Tanae didn't Tanae kill didn't him. punch you in He the was face. so irritated. This God. plaque. I'm still yeah. waiting for this stupid plaque. Yeah, Bischoff. Paul and Bischoff or who? What in God's name is going on? Uh-oh. Who let you in here? Everybody's favorite. Come over here. You can't even be seen. What? Oh my God! Oh! Happy days here for Brian Alvarez. There it is, presented oh, at F4W that. Online for passing a hundred thousand subscribers. Uh huh. I want to give Oreo a hug. Come here, you big fat whale. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to everybody hey! out there. Uh oh. Hey, uh what are you doing? Brian, Oreo. Hey! Taking over the show. Oh no. Dom, Oreo. hit that music, brother. Ah, oh, the hell with it. You know what? It's Monday. It's dance party. No, man. Yeah, no. Yeah. I love you guys. I love you. Oh. When can you have this much fun on a Monday on Wrestling Observer Live? I think we may have started something new here. I hate that whale! If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.